You watch sometimes when you come out, and did it, it must have taken you a little while to adjust or take any rider there, really, because you watch and the gates open, and most of them are, you know, you yeah, guys, if you draw, pump, 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 pumping yeah. really and get your position, and, and oh, so it makes it exciting. Line, it, it's, it's a fine line as well because you can't put a horse out the comfort zone at the same time. But a, a good start is Vites in Hong Kong, and fortunately, Luke and I managed to have a good knack for being good barrier jockeys, so that's a, that's a win, you know. Um, that's been a big help. Make use of your draws and and um, improve from a bad draw. You know that's a big thing. Um, but yeah, it is. It's quick racing. There's no false rails. Um, it's very very tight. But as you say, the more experience you get, yeah. um, it becomes a bit easier. And well, the better horses you're on, it becomes. Easier. Welcome to another edition of In the Box Seat. And before, well, no, no, I'm not going to. Good night. You're going to have to wait. You just wait first. You wait because you are important and we love you lots. But there's somebody else that's a bit more important today than both you and me. So I'm going to introduce him first. It gives me great pleasure to talk to our good friend, racing colleague, champion, wonderful human being, Lyle Hewitson, who's all the way from Hong Kong. He's at one of our guests today. I say one of our guests. We've got two. I'll talk about the second guest in a moment. But let us greet and welcome Lyle Hudson. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks for having me on the show. Happy to get the call up. Been watching it for the past few years and uh, nice to join you. Esteemed gentlemen. You see people do watch our show <laughs> and it does get shown all over the world. So we're not doing too badly. Okay. We're not doing too badly. And uh, Lyle is here. We'll talk to him uh, in a moment. And of course, Hannah Hewitson is also here. She's behind the camera. <laughs> and we welcome her too as well to Summerfeld Clubhouse, an area which she knows so well. And our second guest, after we've chatted to Lyle, because we don't want to keep him here all day, is uh, in, a journalist from Hong Kong by the name of Bart Vanders, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. We'll talk and learn a bit about him just now. And of course, Hong Kong is the... Uh, Big uh, race meeting in Hollywood Bets uh, uh, Gravel this weekend. It's the uh, World Pool Gold Cup on Sunday the 30th. And uh, hence having Lyle and uh, Bart as our guests. Lyle, let's talk, uh, I say personal. Whenever I say personal, everybody gets a bit jittery. Uh, but not too personal. But on a personal note, you're in the country. And the first thing that you did is you arrived here. You've celebrated with all your friends and family your, your wedding. Now, you got married in Hong Kong, obviously, and did all the legalities there. But the party was here in South Africa. How was it? Well done. Yeah, thanks. Um, well, just before going to Hong Kong, um, it was still during COVID. And we were supposed to get married in January at La Paris, all paid and done for. But then Hannah couldn't come with me because we were to leave end of November. Couldn't come with me to Hong Kong. So we had to get... had to postponed the wedding because obviously we were going to be in Hong Kong and we had to get married in court so that she could join me um, and then our plan was to do it that, that following off season but after a long uh, arduous season in, in Hong Kong after COVID and all the happenings we decided we just wanted to, to get out and have a holiday and we'll postpone it another year but um, yeah, all, all good things come to those who wait and it was the most outstanding wedding and to be fair, I didn't have much to do with the planning, so that's all down to the wife. She's done an amazing job, and it was the perfect day. It was, it was just outstanding. Have, and family, friends um, flew in from, from different places, and it couldn't have gone any better. So we'll never forget that day. Well, I'm sure you won't. And to you and Hannah and to your whole family, uh, all the very best in your married life. And uh, just may it go from strength to strength, and may you be blessed with many happy years to both of you. Cheers to that. It's just been, I, I can't get words to describe and how brilliant it's been. And, and uh, we all know that, you know, it started off maybe a bit shakily for you, but with your determination, with your strength, with your positivity, with your work ethic, you just fought on, fought on, and my, oh my, firing on all cylinders now. Yeah, I think that's made the whole journey a little bit more special. I mean, if we go all the way back to 2019 when I first went there, um, look, there's no secret that was a very hard time. And I probably didn't even realize at that stage how difficult it was um, but yeah that, that was really really tough on me and then fortunately getting the opportunity in Japan which, which was a, a big success and then coming back to South Africa and having a, a landslide sort of victory in the championship um, set me up for another stint 
I didn't plan to go over so soon. I thought I would only be, be going over sort of maybe 2025, 20, but got the call up and thought it was the right time to, to go again. And um, yeah, I think it was second meeting. I got on the board and things were looking good. And third meeting was in a group one race and we had that tragic fall and just put everything back to zero again. So I um, had to get, get back on the ladder and, and start to climb and finished off that last season very, very well which meant that I could come into the new season, which would, uh, would end up being my first full season actually in Hong Kong. And um, yeah, that just went from strength to strength and got a lot of outside support. Of course, I had my main base from, from Douglas and then became David Hayes, but then just everyone sort of got on board and got a lot of opportunities. And to raise the bat for a half century was pretty special for your first full season. So couldn't be happier with how the season went. Um, knowing that there was room for, for a lot of improvement too. Tell me something, um, you had a, a, your first stint at Hong Kong wasn't great. I mean, you rode a lot of, you rode a lot of horses, but yeah. you didn't have too many. Well, yeah. How did you get to, to Japan? So I, I, when I got to Hong Kong on the, because I was champion in, in South Africa. Okay. And I'd sort of, uh, I wouldn't, you, you qualified. If you're number one in South Africa, you're unable to put in an application. Still got to find the right channels and still got to be accepted. Right. And when I first got to Hong Kong, I'd um, made connection with um, a friend who, who knew Hiroshi Ando, who was my translator. And Hiroshi was quite keen on getting me there, especially after things had been shaky. He said, well, let's set you up for when your time is done. So because of my championship in South Africa, that's what gave me the credentials to get to Japan. Right. And the time of the year that I went, I wasn't, I wasn't applying the same time as Buick, as Oshin Murphy, as Frankie, who all have higher CVs. Right. And that's where I'm saying that you could have the credentials to have an application, but that doesn't mean you're getting in get because it. it depends who's applying at the same time and whose CV is higher. Um, but yeah, all's well that ends well and got into Japan. Yeah, but he, and he did well in Japan. I yes. Mean, yeah. So what, sort of what's the difference between Japan and Hong Kong? Japan I got Japanese opportunity. are not, not so... <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, I was, I was probably, I had, so, uh, I was probably labelled a little bit, uh, superstitious. superstitious, yeah, I was probably labelled a little bit bad luck because I had that suspension that started off, yeah, that I got from South Africa, that started off, and then straight away that put me on the back foot, and then, yeah, it was just, it was downhill from there, um, but going to Japan, it was a fresh start, had an agent that had been doing Oshin Murphy's rides, and he had left just before me, so I sort of fell into the same mould, and um, got those opportunities and was able to make good with him. And, and obviously, when, when in Japan firing, then obviously the world watches now and say, well, look at that, and he's now firing the winners. So that would have helped uh, when you came back for the next time you know, to, to Hong Kong, that people can see that you're a champ, you can ride, etc. And, and, and sort of, would that have helped in, in your opinion? Yeah, I'm sure it would have. And I mean, when you go from South Africa to Hong Kong, I think it's, it's not like going from Australia. They don't watch our racing. So when you get there, you're not known. You know, okay. um, they might read your bio, but means means very little. Um, so the trainers and that and owners don't really know who you are, and I think you don't start on a level playing field. You yeah. probably start on a negative. So sure. um, then, having been there, they obviously knew can put a face to the name, and then Japan would have certainly bumped that up after doing well there, and then having a really good time in South Africa. Sure. Um, there was just some connection they would have seen. I'll bring it up now. Christophe Lemaire, who was champion jockey at the time when you were riding. Yes. He gave you great PR. He said you were the next superstar. Yeah, I think. I mean, <laughs> I hope so. Right. But um, that was very, very kind of him. Um, and, well, he was a good judge with horses, so hopefully with riders he is too. <laughs> <laughs> Please believe me, he certainly is, because there's our product sitting here with us. When you look at the, you talk about superstition, etc. In Hong Kong, you look at some of the names. You know, they're all lucky this and star that, and they're all very happy. You know, it's it's it, names like happy, lucky, star, are all in, in the horses' names. Correct me if I'm wrong. And their colours, a lot of them have got stars on and happy hearts and those sort of things, which is, you know, you can see that that positive vibe is is big for them. Oh, it's, it's huge superstition there, but it's it's just it's the culture. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So like I say, obviously there's the horses' names, colours, yeah. um, you know, they have all the tradition of having bisons, which is pretty similar to just having a um, sort of a 
in a way, a spiritual barbecue in the yard just to, to bless the yard and have good luck for the season. They might do it halfway through. Um, and then there's one at the end of the season. And these are all things that you, you've got to, got to be a part of. How have you adapted to that, Lyle? It's, 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 it's interesting that you bring that up because, you, again, on social media we follow all these things and you see these uh, gatherings and the celebrations, etc., and it's their culture, and we respect everyone's culture. But, I mean, uh, you adapted. I mean, you just you have to adapt. You, 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 they, they're happy to embrace you and, and bring you in on that celebration. Yeah, I think, well, it has, it has been, it's been easy to, to adapt and I've, I've enjoyed the culture. Um, but also when you start doing doing better and you're having more winners you also have a, a sort of more a sense of more confidence so sure. being a part of these things you're able to socialize a bit more and it just makes everything a lot easier you know you almost feel like you get invited to more of them as well you wanted to they want you to be there and um yeah see so, and then when you are there you're creating more connections which leads to more winners yeah um so you've got to be a social art too yeah you <laughs> certainly do it's a that's why, although we race twice a week, it's, you work seven days a week. Yeah, because yeah. if you're not doing something social with owners and trainers, yeah, um, you're on the website studying horses and phoning for rides. I mean, we'll be booked up for rides for the next month. Sure, okay. Um, so, you know, if I'm sitting here and I was riding Sunday at Grable, I'll know what I'm riding in three weeks' time at Grable Jeez, too. Okay. Um, even phoning for this meeting on July day, I think I'd had half my rides booked already once they'd crossed the line because I phoned straight away for rides and that's just because of what I'd become accustomed to. Accustomed to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the trainers were sort of, well, I'm going to see, you know, I don't know if I'm running or what's the story. And I'm like, no, I need to know now. This is how it's got to work. But that's just, that's what you become accustomed to and it, it works. Um, it's, a, it's a different system for sure in Hong Kong, but when you know the ins and outs, um, it's fluid. So, so Dougie White must have been a, a big influence Huge. in your career. Um, you know, he's, he, you can't do, do anything as a jockey without the horses. There's many great riders around that probably haven't achieved nearly what they could have without, because That's they haven't cool. got the opportunities. Um, and that was a big thing this time around. I still needed someone to, to give me the leg up, you know, and Dougie was that person. And um, we built a good relationship and had a heap of winners. But then also to exceed um, expectations and do even better, you need support from everyone, yeah, especially awesome. in a small horse pool like Hong Kong. And that's where this season has blossomed because of the, the outside support too. So yeah, I'll be forever indebted to him because I needed somebody to give him that leg up and he was that man. Um, but the best thing is that we've got a good relationship outside of racing and we, we're good friends too. I was just going to say, absolutely, you become good friends, yep. uh, you and Dougie, and, and we look forward to, to um, you know, seeing more of Dougie and, and, and learning more about him. But Dougie, Dougie, you know, the first memory I got of Dougie is when he, he rode London News in Scottsville. At Scottsville, okay. He won, he won, he won his maiden in Scottsville. Jeez, okay. That's, yeah, that's going back some time. That is um, my first, first time I met Dougie and he, he didn't even remember it. So then I told him that he came to ride Black Arthur. And I think I had joined the academy but not riding, or maybe the year before, I can't remember. But he had come to ride Black Arthur and that was the first time I met, met Dougie. So. Uh, Lyle, how does it work there? Because you ride a lot for Dougie, and, and uh, it, I mean, do, do they have stable riders? Is it chop and change? Uh, how, how, what is the club's influence? Because we see that, you know, obviously you look, you see a lot of rides for Dougie, and then you, you know, not riding as many for Dougie, and then you honor a few for Dougie, and there's variant. How does it work? Do the club get involved? So, are you a club rider? Yes, you club are. rider. So, as a club rider, um, there's no hard and fast rule when you get there, but for example, end of last season, well, for, for half the season, I'd, I was riding 60% of, maybe more, maybe 70% of Douglas' horses, um, and he was giving me 7% of his, you know? And then the club stepped in, and they said, look, and I think it was from Douglas' time when he was riding for size, and then yeah. they stepped in and said, you, you can only have up to 40%. Okay. But it was not like this meeting, you know, if he's got 10 runners, you can only have four. They will do it after like a month and go, right, okay. you, you, went, you stepped over a little bit. You need to re rein it in. So they did get involved. And that they said that we got to slow that down a bit. Um, but at the same time, we, I was in the position where, look, I'll be on the bench if I don't take his ride, you know, because I wasn't getting much outside support. But then this season I've had a heap and it's actually been quite hard because you also got to be loyal to, to someone who's loyal to you. Absolutely. Um, and we found a balance. It, it works, it's, it's, it's difficult. And like I say, because you're booking also in advance, 
you might get offered a better one and you got to keep a relationship so you don't chop and change. I found it very interesting. Yeah, it's hard. It very, uh, absolutely, it must be difficult, but interesting because somebody mentioned that to me in the lead up to this podcast uh, about that and I found it interesting where, where is, it's almost like, well, hang on, you, you've passed your quota, you know, and, and yeah. so what if you've yeah, passed your quota, you but know, it's obviously a big thing there. That's such a small pool of horses, really. Yeah. Relatively yeah. small yeah. pool of horses. So, yeah. Um, but like, like Zach Purton, I mean, He's got free reign. Free reign. I mean, um, with Douglas's loyalty, I mean, he doesn't necessarily take my rides that I've done one on for Dougie, but I could win three in a row for another trainer, and if Zach wins it, he's got it. Yeah. So, you know, he gets he gets the pick, and he's he's worked his way there. I mean, he also started his first season wasn't he wasn't a champion jockey first season, um, so he deserves his success. He's very good, um, but. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, when, you, when you're yeah, taking your rides, it's very hard. Off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You just got to aspire to be in that position one day. And, um, you know, with that comes a lot of responsibility and a lot of pressure. And he's, he's done magnificent. So, um, yeah, can't, can take nothing away from him. He yeah, is, as good as the horses are, you've got to get it done. Yeah. 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 Marewa, he's, he's sort of, his blood's sort of fading in Hong Kong. Well, he's, he's not he's there. He he's left, left, he left uh, last season. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he was brilliant, he's a fantastic jockey. He had a lot of issues towards the end. Now he's sort of on, he's called it his farewell tour, but it's a bit like Frankie, it's been extended and extended and extended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think it, I would, I, I'd imagine if I was in the same position, I'd also find it hard to actually yeah. let go. Yes, you know, yes, it's easy to yes. say, we come into well, an end, but... It's your life. Been, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's your livelihood, and it's your... And it's your, crazy, your because when you say it, life. then you start riding these big winners, and you think, jeez, oh, I'm not ready to go now. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm in the prime again. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I remember when Joe, when Marua came out here, he was riding in, in Singapore at the time. Yeah. Uh, I remember when we had the, those jockey internationals, yeah. and he came out here, and the bloke said, who's this place from Singapore? He said, yeah, where do you find him? He's brilliant. He came out, he was bloody brilliant. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Was absolutely no form of running second and third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was the, the top class. Now, let's jump back to South Africa, again, back to a personal note. Dad, every time Dad has a winner, and I, and I have the privilege of interviewing him in the winner's box, we always ask, how's Lau, any, any winners today? Because obviously, we do follow the racing as much as we can. People often say to me, do you play in Hong Kong? I said, of course I do. I said, but you know, you've got to study the form. I said, I don't need to know any form. I just open the card, I look for uh, uh, Hewitson, I look for Ferraris, and I look for Teton, and I put 50 bucks on each per race, and I'm in the money. So I don't need another form, but uh, so Dad, exceptionally proud. There was some lovely footage of him on on, on social media at the wedding. Big smiles, lovely big glass of jar in his hand, and loving his his, his son's wedding and very proud, I'm sure. But uh, you know, nice to see him again, and nice that his yard's ticking over. And of course, he's got uh, the, the, the uh, Mike Moroni supporting him, and. Uh, yeah, Dad, uh, nice to, to, to see that he's doing well. And he always says you could do with more support, which everybody can. But uh, a very proud dad he is. Yeah. Well, just going back to you betting in Hong Kong, I mean, I hope you manage to still pay your mortgage and whatnot. Because <laughs> we don't win that many. Um, <laughs> no, well, you wouldn't win no, it's, enough it's, for yeah, me. Yeah, it's going well. Um, yeah, but Dad, we were firstly, we had a, just, as I said, the, the wedding was just perfect. And I mean, I know his son, so he can be biased, but he just said he's... It was the best thing he's been to, so that was that's special. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, from the from the training perspective, he's an outstanding trainer. F from the days he was assistant to Bet, mm. the record speaks for himself. Um, and he's I've worked too with shy many. For his own good. Yeah, I've, I've worked with many great trainers, and I promise you, he he just has it, and he's got the experience because he's been all around the world, you know. Yeah. So he's able to put all that into practice. But yeah, he could sharpen up on his PR, <laughs> um, and I think. That's something, I mean, I've always, fortunately, I went to a great school, and that's helped. Um, and I've, I've been, been, been good in that, that aspect, but also being Hong Kong, you just have to be that much better, and that's, that's been a big thing. I mean, I was speaking to Luke the other day, and he said he can't believe how, now being back home and chatting to people, he, he sees the difference in himself just from, from being in Hong Kong. Um, so, yeah, I think my dad probably needed a touch-up in, in, that, in that aspect. But uh, things are tough now to get owners. I mean, every, the small yards find it hard. The big yards have their, their big patrons, and the, those are the guys that can keep buying. But I think he's got 15 horses left, and he's, he's had 25-odd winners this season. I think he's done really well. Yeah, um, 
very, very proud of him. And yeah, I know what he could do if he had more. So more. please buy, please buy him horses. <laughs> the owner pool is shrinking. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is, it is, it is. But but he's, he's he is a horseman, and yeah. and he's just a likable chap. He's always happy to talk to the media. He's just he will get he will get more chances, no yes. doubt. Yeah. <laughs> then, um, Mom, of course, uh, she would have been over the moon to have her son back in town at the wedding as well, and, and just great celebrations, and she's equally as proud as Dad is. Yeah, for sure. She was, uh, I don't know how much she saw of the wedding, because she was behind tears the whole time. <laughs> um, but they were happy tears. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just special. My sisters were in from the UK. Yes. My nan also came back, so my dad got to see her as well. And okay. It was just a happy occasion. Everyone, everyone loved it, and... Uh, like I said, all accolades to Hannah. She put everything together. Well, <coughs> you, you talk about Luke. Uh, you and Luke are very close. And, and I, I was at Tifton Stud, your fishing area, nice um, fish there, too, just yeah. the other day and, and spent some time with, La, with um, Luke's family. Mrs. Greetrix from Clifton, no? Yes, yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Greetrix, oh, Frank, absolutely. And uh, they were just saying how good the two of you are for each other. You just get on like a house on fire, you support one another, and you just two brothers yeah well it can be the most uh, cutthroat place you know hong kong and um you don't need to make it any harder by having enemies so yeah. just try to get along with everyone was my main thing but obviously luke also when i came back from japan he he stayed with me um for six months or what he was, and he became like a brother you know um and i say that because half the time he's getting on my nerves and half the time <laughs> we love him to bits um, but it is, it's nice to have him there, seeing him growing into to a young man as well. I feel like a proud older brother. <laughs> and he, he's done fantastic, so very happy with, with him too. Well, I'll tell you, just, we, we need to find out about the racing. I mean, the, the pace in Hong Kong is frenetic. I feel like when you're there and, and, and riding, it just feels, I mean, especially when you're in, in the zone, everything is slow-mo, but the horses are adapted to it. And you become adapted, so it just feels like that's how it should be. It's second nature. Um, but it is. I mean, of course, you can see the times on the TV. They're, they're slick. The ground is usually quick, you know. When they say good ground, it's good to firm. It, it's what good to firm would be here. Um, so you can't ride a Bakabiki race there. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, you watch sometimes when you come out, and you, or did it, it must have taken you a little while to adjust or take any rider there, really, because you watch and the gates open and... Most of them are, you know, you yeah, guys, if you draw, pumping, pump, pump, pumping yeah. really, and get your position, and, and you know, so it makes it exciting. Line, it, it's, it's a fine line as well, because you can't put a horse out the comfort zone at the same time. But a, a good start is vital in Hong Kong, and fortunately, Luke and I managed to have a good knack for being good barrier jockeys, so that's a, that's a win, you know. Um, that's been a big help. Make use of your draws and, and um, improve from a bad draw, you know, that's a big thing. Um, but yeah, it is. It's quick racing. There's no false rails. Um, it's very, very tight. But as you say, the more experience you get, yeah. um, it becomes a bit easier. And well, the better horses you're on, it becomes easier. But I'm just watching, I mean, watching Hong Kong, and if our blokes did that, the horses would be falling over at the foot on the No, you're right. Yeah. No, for sure. You, the horses, like I said, they're, they're adapted to that, yeah. you know, that, that style of racing. So... Yeah, they, I mean, you must remember there also, horses aren't brought in, I mean, a lot of them are bought as PPs, so uh, private purchases, and they come in there with feature form from overseas, and they might end up in class five, and that's because they haven't adapted. Yes, yes. It doesn't mean they're bad horses, they just never managed, they're not suited to that style of racing, or that ground, or just the tracks in general. And then you can get another horse that goes there and just blossoms, and he could have only been um, an A division horse yeah. overseas. But it's got there and just really taken to stride. I, I've always thought Singapore, Singapore Sling was a great example. I know he was a, I think it was the Graham Beck or, or Guineas winner. Yeah. But I never thought he was a, I never thought that he was a, one, one of the best. You know, he wasn't the, the give me the green lights or one of those horses. But he went to, to Hong Kong and he just really, really fit in. And if it wasn't for Beauty Generation, he would have been the outstanding horse over those few years. And it just shows you how, um, how adapting to a place can play a big role. And I think that's in every aspect, from a trainer, from a jockey, and a horse too. Yeah, well, I think in Hong Kong, your horse has got to be sound. For sure. There was uh, Van Treo, 
and I always thought a lot of him. He went, he was with Sean and rode his, I won in him twice and then I think he ran second to Hawam with Celtic C in third. Yeah. And it was a bit of a strange form race. I think the pace might have made that race a bit flattering, but he was a, ni a really nice horse. And he went there and he dropped all the way to class five before he won because he had an injury setback in his first trial. Finally got him back on the road, dropped through the rating from class three to class five, managed to win a class five with Karras. Then I won a class four, four, on, enemy, four on him his next start. And then he had an injury setback again. <laughs> But I think it's hard for us South African horses because they're time off. So if you get sent there as a young three-year-old, it's too much time off. You know, your bones and, and muscles and everything just haven't, haven't got time to strengthen up because you're not getting that, that work in. And then all of a sudden you're into the grinder on those hard tracks and yeah, it's I find inevitable. It also, with, 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 it's, just, it's my opinion, but the poly track at Greyhawk, the older horses do better. Yeah. Uh, the five-year-olds, the six-year-olds, they love it. Yeah. No, the they've strengthened up. Sure. And, and most of the issues are faster. Yeah. Talking about that track and riding that track at, at uh, the tracks in Hong Kong, uh, you see them stoke them up before they've even turned for home. You know, if you see that here, yeah, Hollywood beats Gravel or Hollywood beats so Scotsman, you think, what are you doing? <laughs> Gone too soon. But meanwhile, you have to. I mean, you, you, you can come wide. And I've seen many come wide and so pull off and come wide and win. Well, that's, that's, that's where, it's the, when I tell you about the studying, the track, track um, the rail positions play play a big role so you get a b b plus two c c plus three and that's just how far they set out and um, you get a general trend of where you need to sit where the some of those rail positions you need to be on pace most of the time to win and some of them allow you to get momentum and come wide okay but then you're also going to have to have the weather conditions to to play with and then the pace of the races and that. So studying throughout the evening, I mean, you could go one, two, three, those three races, and you go, right, I've, I've realized that this track is about getting back and then getting momentum and coming wide. And these are things, so every race you've got to learn something because it changes, well, you, the, the trend starts to become apparent throughout a meeting. And then a curveball gets thrown in and they roll the track after race six. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, you... Coming wide there, I mean, you, you don't want to be sitting wide the whole way, no. You get a good tri tri uh, trip, um, get something to, to tow you into the race and swing wide, turning for home at Happy Valley, you've only got 300 meters left, you know. That's why you're saying you see them coming off the bridle, but yes. half around the turn is only 400. Yeah, yeah. And normally we find by getting to the rock, which is about 550 out, is where you want to be getting on your bike, well, or le at least getting the revs up. Um, so there's a lot to learn. And sure. when I was watching before going to Hong Kong, I said, could never do that, could never come wide like this. But then you realize that the rail is going to be off today. You've got to be getting wider. And you, you learn about it when you're there. It's all about experience. Just uh, one or two things, because we, we could sit here and talk all day, and we can't, because we don't want to hold you up. You also want to go and uh, see family and do all those kind of things. But just a couple of things as we're in the home straight. And we've also still got Bart uh, Vanders uh, to talk to just now, when, once Lyle leaves us. But couple of things quickly. Um, home, what's home like? I mean, are you living in a, to uh, in a skyscraper building? Are you in a comfortable apartment? What's it like? What's your home like? And what's living it like living in Hong Kong? Well, a com uh, well, housing is very expensive in Hong Kong. And we're very fortunate to be in the position that the Hong Kong Jockey Club puts us up in apartments, which are at the race course at Charton, where we do all our training. Um, so we are starting to throw away from the training tracks, which is which is a pleasure for, for waking up early and, and getting the work done. Um, but also, for the size apartments we have, uh, you'd be paying an arm and a leg, so we're very, very lucky to, to have them. Okay. Um, so no complaints, home life's very good. Um, Hannah does all the interior. We, we get the basic set up, everything's perfect. But you know, as you get comfortable, you, want to you make start it. making it home. Sure, absolutely. And um, you know, every, every couple of months you just feel like you're becoming more and more comfortable there. So, what do you do great. after work? I told you. you study, study, <laughs> study form, go to the stable, I exercise socialize. twice a day. Oh, you go to the gym twice a day. Yeah. Twice a day. Um, we'll be doing form. Uh, we'll be phoning trainers. You might have uh, entries coming out at 2.30. It's just, going there's always something going, going to a good restaurant. Usually, usually Thursdays, you'll have an owner's dinner. So it's a 12-hour so. job. 
24 hours. Come on, give me a sleep sometimes. And Lalo, um, other South Africans, Jared Samuels being, I, I know, is he still there? I know still he was, I think maybe must have gone on a holiday. Devon Neathling's doing yeah. very well. Um, and of course, there are many other South Africans there, and you see them obviously on a regular basis. Yeah, and we're getting one more recruit in with Keegan de Miller. So yes, yes, yes. And we, we, you better look after Yeah, we're starting to, to pump up the numbers there. But um, even in town, there's a, there's a bit of a South African community growing, and I think it's becoming a bit more, more and more popular. Um, but it is nice to see a familiar face every now and yeah, then. Yeah. Jared doesn't stop talking in the mornings from 4 o'clock until work's done. <laughs> you don't even have to work for his yard and you can hear him there. Okay. But um, he's just having a good time. So I think he's, he's in a happy place and that, that's great. Um, Devan's more in Chung Fa, which is in China. But every now and then he pops over and it's good to see him. He's getting more involved with um, the academy side of things, I believe, now. And I think that would be a great experience too. There's a lot of the... Ex jockeys that are work riding in Chung Fa as well. Okay. So yeah, there's a good community growing, and like I said, we've got Karis, who's a, a borrowed South African, <laughs> um, Luke, and with Keegan joining, um, there's four of us in there, so it's nice. Of course, with the season having just ended, as yeah, I see Karis is. Uh, he got married on the same day as me. Uh, that's and right. under the same circumstances, missed his wedding because of COVID. Jeez, okay, that's Twenty second right. of July, he got that's married, right. and, and he was in Mauritius. Yeah, he was, he's with his family in Mauritius, and and. Uh, uh, correct, quite right. But everybody goes sort of on holiday, which is nice for us and nice for everybody to to see one another. Wednesday, which is uh, we're recording on a different day, but that doesn't matter because it's Tuesday today. Wednesday, you ride at Hollywood Bet Scottsville. Um, Sunday, you ride at Hollywood Bet Gravel, of course, at the big day. Lovely and lovely just to have you riding, and, and uh, hopefully we can have a winner or two or three, and, and be interviewing you. And uh, yeah, you must be looking forward to it, obviously. I really am. It's always nice to get back, and um, and right, I mean we've got great jockeys here, you know, and it's 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 also just another aspect. It's always going to make you you're going to sharpen the tool a bit more. So riding against them will be will be great, um, and just back on these tracks, you know, everything. Even though I was here, you know, when you've been away for a while, you come. It's you just remember a few more things and yes. sharpen up in different aspects. So you and the golf with the brass. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I can do it again. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, thanks to the trainers too. Got some nice support. I think my rides are decent sure, on both lucky. days. Yeah. Well, yeah, I tell you what. <laughs> I tell you what. That that was lucky because Richard was riding those horses, okay. and then that Kenilworth meeting got moved, and Richard had, had to commit to those. So picked up those. Last for, minute, for tomorrow, for, for, for Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday. Right, okay, okay. Um, and hopefully I can repay him for yeah. putting me on. But um, yeah, sure you will. just sure you just will. happy with all the rides and riding for good people, good owners. So it'd be good to uh, to get in the winners box. Well, you're sure really did you? Yeah, I think it was again. You know, we had a really good relationship and started off as um, a working relationship. I was there from an apprentice, but we also became close and became friends, which makes every winner more rewarding. Sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, Lyle, uh, lastly, before we do these quick, quick fires, um, the public are huge in, in Hong Kong. They're a huge part of the racing industry. What I so enjoy is, you know, when the jocks go up to the railing with they all hanging over, hanging over and you know, high five with the crowds and I mean, that's something extra special too, isn't it? That yeah. crowd must erupt when you... Well, you always down. think you're not going to do it. And then when you try past and everyone's screaming, you just think, oh, I'm getting involved in this. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that's, yeah. It's fantastic. I give a little whoop. <laughs> and then now they know it's me. So when, I, when, I, when I've had a winner, they start whooping. Oh, I've got to do it again, you know? <laughs> you try past. It is. It's nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, um, it, it is. And, you know, for someone like me... We want to grow racing, you know, so if you can get these people a little bit more involved and get them there every Wednesday, that's the goal. What's your relationship with the, with the Hong Kong press? I hope it's good. <laughs> yeah, I hope well, it's good. But we're about to find out. Yeah, yeah, well, like I mean, well, you know, I, they might do behind my back because I don't speak uh, Cantonese, but um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm happy to deal with the, the press all the time, which is great. And... Uh, uh, I think most of the time they must be writing good things. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely they are. Absolutely they are. Okay. Quick fire questions is something that we've just a bit of fun as we end up on, on our, our discussion. Uh, I'm going to mention well, a, a word or two words and you're going to tell us the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Uh, obviously, one of our team here is, used to be a doctor in their old age, so I'm going to try and, in their younger age, let me try and work out what they're saying. But quick fire questions. 
You'd, I'm gonna let you off this time because yeah, there's good. someone here that I don't think you. I don't even haven't even heard of. I them. might be rude. All right, let's go. Elon Musk. Smart. Celtic Sea. The best. South Africa. Home. Jimmy Ting. Uh, quiet. Okay, I'll have to come. Jimmy Ting. Uh, the well, trainer back then. Oh, I thought they were. Well, <laughs> Jimmy Ting. Quiet. Okay. AI technology. Uh, difficult. <laughs> Memes. Funny. Hong Kong. Second home. Do it again. Uh, Marvel. Luck. Hong Kong. Culture. Um, personal. Dougie Watt. Friend. Shot and race course. Amazing. I mean, it's got to be the best. He's got to be the best. Different division, man. <laughs> different division. And there's the decision, split decision to make some races, etc. Yeah, there we go. Well, uh, Lau, what else can I say? We could, as I said, go on for hours, and but we don't want to do that. We just wanted to touch base with you. We just wanted to, to hear how things are going and, and just welcome you back to South Africa, yeah. you and your wife, Hannah, uh, and, and to the whole Hewitson and, and families and, and everyone that's associated to the two of you. All the very best. We look forward to still seeing you at uh, Wednesday at Scottsville. You coming racing? You might uh, now. Might make it. Yes, you better. You better. But no. you better. But we'll all now slide a hundred rand under the table to get you some plates. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we see you at the, at the big World Pool Gold Cup race meeting yeah. on Sunday. It's just going to be fabulous. And I also believe I don't know if you've uh, talking about international owners. Uh, um, Mark Moroni's coming out. Yes, amazing. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's his first trip out of Ireland. Correct. I believe. Correct. Um, so. Yeah. Oh, it would be special to have that winner for yeah. my dad and for him, so yeah. we'll be he, doing our best. And he has called for a dinner, uh, of which uh, my wife and I were lucky to get an invitation, so uh, we'll definitely be seeing you a lot more, which is great, you and Hannah. But thanks for your time and thanks for everything that you do for racing and, and just for being the humble Lyle Hudson that we've always known. Yeah, thanks, Warren, and um, yeah, thanks to both of you for having me on the show. Always a pleasure to chat to you and uh, look to just keep doing what I'm doing or, or do it better. Oh, lovely. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Well, we're going to we're going to take a little breather. We're going to take a break for a moment or two, and we're going to get Bart, who's a journalist from Hong Kong, into the hot seat, and we'll continue the show with you shortly. But it was absolutely fantastic talking to Lyle, and uh, he's gone off to go and do a few chores and get ready for racing at Hollywood Bet Scottsville tomorrow. And uh, now we're going to be joined by. Uh, Hong Kong journalist, one of the journalists from Hong Kong by the name of Bart Vanders. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome him to our show, to South Africa, and of course to Durban for the very first time. Bart, how are you? Good, very good. How are you doing? It's very nice to be back. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, you've been here in South Africa before, uh, yes. but this is your first time to KwaZulu Natal, your first time to Durban, is that yes. right? The last three times, all in Cape Town. Okay. Yeah, it was at the Met. Yes, you, 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 you two met, the, you two met at the Met. At the Met. And, the, and the last time, actually, is the Asian Racing Conference is in 2020, right? Yes. Yeah, I was about to, to watch the, the Cape Derby, I think. But suddenly, because the COVID is spreading, yes. the, 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 and, and the flights, are ca they cancel my flight. So I need to change the flight. And before the Derby, I need to rush back to Hong Kong. So. I have no chance to watch the Cape Derby. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's so you haven't watched the Cape Derby yet <laughs> <laughs> on that year. And that, okay, yeah, yeah, but, but you, you before Cape Derby in the same day with the Met Day. Ah, remember? yes, okay. That day okay. I yeah. watched it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But tell us about well, you, what are your first couple of your impressions of of Durban, of Summerfelt? You, you had Summerfelt for the first time. You hear in Durban for the first time. What is your first impression? Oh, Durban always. You know when when you when you when we have a champion jockey with the nickname Durban Demon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Durban Demon. You know, there's something happened something something happened here, you know. And I always mention it's one of the three most important places in the, the racing in South Africa, Cape Town, Joe Joburg and Durban. So I always have the impression that but I, I don't I don't expect a, a, a big, well organized training center here. It's quite different from Cape okay, Town. Okay, okay, okay. Now, what is your role? What job? Uh, I said at the beginning, uh, you know, when I introduced you, that you're a, a journalist from Hong Kong. But tell us more. What do you do, and, and how did you get into that position? Oh, that is <laughs> to start with. You know, when when I was studying university, you know, in uh, in US, 
um, this university is quite far away from my home. So when I, when I, when I went to the school, and sometimes, you know, in between classes, there were a few hours, I cannot drive back to home, right? So I always stop in Hollywood Park racetrack in, oh, in, okay. in, Los in Los Angeles. And I always, I, I bet racing scene, I was a kid, so. <laughs> and then I get, I, and then start to get, pick up some knowledge, this and that. And, and then when I got back to Hong Kong, I, I, I think in 1996, I worked for one or two years, and then I don't think I like the job, and I see, the newspaper posting that they try to hire a racing reporter, and then I try to apply, and that's it. Who <laughs> <laughs> okay. did you actually work for now, Bart? I worked for actually first one newspaper. Can I mention? There's no need to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, called Shingdao Daily. It's a it's a newspaper as a reporter. So I come to the track work three or four times a week. Track work, mm. and also every race meeting I have to be to track. Uh, track work. I need to get some news get some gossip <laughs> and so I try to try to interview trainers and jockeys there and then in the race during the race we need to spoke to a club official just write some after race story and there's one part uh, in the in the as a reporter but another part is uh, also my my newspaper Shingdo they have the um, a YouTube channel for do a racing forecast okay. for the local racing I usually do it once a week okay. get two racing I do do the day racing and Starting three or four, four, three or four years ago, we do the simulcasting preview. So, okay. and I have to do almost all with my all my colleagues do the simul overseas simulcast preview show too, and that's why I, I part of uh, the reason I'm here too. Well, uh, that was going to be my other question to you, uh, um, uh, Bart is. Does your is your work only newspaper? But you've just answered that you you know you do uh, television work, you do camera work, you do uh, all sorts of work um, as well. Social media? Do you do is your work go onto social media uh, on those platforms and websites and everything? Uh, website not not really because I just wrote something and put it on the website. But social media, as I said, is a YouTube channel. Yes, yes, yes. You can you can watch it just like your channel is YouTube channel, similar okay. things, you know. Okay. And do mostly the racing preview for local and overseas okay. racing. And Bart, why do you like South Africa so much? South African racing. What is it that appeals to you? Well, I, it's quite unique, I would say. Is it? Um, actually, after the first time. No, no, carry on. I, I went to I went to Cape Town. It, the impression is not bad in the racing, you know. And uh, so you see the top tr the top trainers, yes, jockeys. Yes. Uh, the, this is quite well actually. And then I start. At, but before that, you know, I, I some South African jockey is, is a friend. Robbie Fred is a good yes, friend of mine. Okay. And, uh, okay. and uh, as, as, so I start, and I keep watch, always watching South African racing. So, okay. so, but when you see it yourself, it's the different. You know, you get a better in, uh, impression. Yes. And it's quite nice in my opinion. And sometimes I think it's, it's some racing or horses are underrated in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So this is your first time. So are you racing Hollywood? It's Scottsville tomorrow. I will actually. You will be I want to have a look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you must. It's a good question. I think you must come to because obviously you come into the World Pool Gold Cup, uh, of mm. course. Uh, you know, and of course the, the Hong Kong uh, Jockey Club, etc. And such a wonderful day. We're looking so forward to it and so thankful for it. Uh, but I think if you can come to Hollywood Bets uh, Scottsville tomorrow, Wednesday. But by the time this show gets broadcast, it'll probably be Thursday. But that's fine. Get up to Scottsville because. It's a it's a country course we call it, although it's in the capital. It's not it's a country a, course, but it's, it, it it's looks like city it. tracks. Uh, Gravel's the city I track. Know, well, I like <laughs> to go there. Get go there. Get, 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 get more it's got such a beautiful yeah. view of the country and the distance, etc. It's a beautiful track. So if you can get there tomorrow, get there. We'll, we'll, we'll. There we, we can't go. miss this. Can't thing, miss no. it. There <laughs> we go. Andrew will Andrew will take you to Lake oh, Shore, and Andrew <laughs> will host you, and Dean will be with you. How did you, uh, 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 Dean? Who's a, a racing man and, and, and loves the horses as well? How did you meet? How did you and Dean cross paths? Oh, the first time when I was there, he he, he, he I know him he, when he was in, I was in Cape Town. Okay. okay. Yeah. Then, then since then we keep keep contact. Sometimes he he came, he stopped by in Hong Kong and uh, sometimes we meet in in Aus Australia or somewhere yes, in, in yes. the Asian Racing Conference. Yeah. We meet on and off everywhere, so we we just be, become friends and okay. <laughs> it's very helpful though. Okay. Yeah, well, racing is quite a small community when you think about it. Yes, actually. Globally. Yeah. Yes. 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 
Bart, what challenges do you, in your jo daily routine, in your job, do you face any challenges in Hong Kong, uh, dealing with trainers, jockeys, owners, etc.? Do, do you have any challenges? Actually, that's what I heard, I'm not sure it's true. <laughs> The Hong Kong Jockey Club always encourage or maybe the suggestion to the trainers and jockey to try to talk more open to the, to the press because the, this information maybe the public may know. Of course, certain trainer doesn't like still doesn't talk to the press before the race and but overall we can we it's accessible you know we can yes. go there to ask them we can do and talk. I think. That, that makes it easier, you know, for, for that part as a reporter. Yes. Now, as I said before, when I was talking to Lyle, I mean, the, the Hong Kong is such a sort of a compressed community, mm. and the Hong Kong Jockey Club, they make the rules, and they... they Abad, they, but they, they rules. Are, but they say to the trainers and the jockeys, you speak to the press. Yeah, you know? yeah. And because it's an important it's part of the industry. Information. The industry. Information, information is most important. Yeah. So you, you would click on the Hong Kong Jockey Club website, you can, you can see track work, track work time, track work video, and also the past performance of horses, the horses performs overseas, and you get all the information you have, and maybe some people like to see the, what the trainers and jockey like, maybe it's part of it, so they recommend you to, to do more. And also the jockey club have many preview show and on the media too, you see many of that. Yes, mm. yes. Interesting. Um, what is the atmosphere like at the races when you go to the race meetings? Because I've only seen it on TV. Uh, maybe one day I'll get to Hong Kong. It'll be a, an absolute treat oh, if I can. <laughs> um, well, at the moment, we're battling to get to Pine Town, never mind to Hong Kong. <laughs> but what we'll do is, 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 is we always watch and, and, and try and capture the atmosphere from watching on TV. But what's it like actually being there? With all those crowds and all that shouting. Oh, if you're on a big day, if you want a big race meeting, just international or the Champions Day, is, is tense, man. People have support there. The, 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 the favorite horse, just like Golden Sixty, and you know, those are the f public favorite, you know. They really cheer for them, you know. Okay. Yeah, I think they become like the horses become like personalities. Like, I remember Charles Dickens uh, in Cape Town, yes. everybody was Charles Dickens, Charles Dickens. When he got beaten, the King's Plate, everybody got. Everybody left yeah, the horse. Yeah, <laughs> the, whole, the whole grandstand become quiet. quiet. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. You've uh, chatting to Lal. You, you, you enjoy Charles Dickens. You, you, you int I intrigued by him and looks and, and like a very good horse. Yes, man. Yeah. yes. It's sad, you know. Those top horses have no chance to prove themselves in the world stage. You yes, know, there's yeah. a so hard to evaluate, but. From what I saw, not a hey, at least come on, not a bad horseman. Come on, <laughs> yeah, how good it is! Uh, yeah. We really sometimes need to test. Yeah. Of course, you know when you send a horse overseas, there are many factors affected. You know maybe it's not climatized, but but some sometimes you need to do that to prove yourself. Yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, the I Japanese love that. You know they do always to prove the, when they win overseas, they will get more po popularity at home, you know, yes. when, they, when the Japanese soccer won overseas. That's how, they, how their system works. Yeah, we're waiting for the Japanese to win the ARC. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> they dream of it, you the know, dream, long yeah. time, yeah. When you, you come into the race meeting on, on the weekend uh, to, to the big day on Sunday, you are reporting, obviously, what, are you, what will you be doing at the race meeting? What can your followers back home be look forward to? First, these few days, I do, I do some taping and do some interview. I write story on newspaper and tape some f video to send to my preview show. Right. On race day on Sunday, I will, I will just, we have a call, con contact with the Hong Kong Jockey Club before right. each race. Okay. I will just tell them what I saw, what I like, what I, or what I hear. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then I give you my selection and then just, just provide more information to the, to the reader or the, or the people watching the show. There. So you, you give up uh, before each race, you yeah. go to the parade ring and you see what's there and then you... Yeah, you around 15 minutes before the race I need to call, call them by Skype right. and they saw, hey, okay. this horse maybe I like and uh, maybe I heard this horse maybe yeah. not good, something like that. But of course, before that I need to do all the forms. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. How do you find the difference because the, the form that you're used to in, in Hong Kong compared to our South African form? Uh, you know, this form is similar to the Singapore okay, form, right? so okay. I, I, I get used to it quite some, because okay. then, and I did, I studied many times already. Some still cannot figure out, but overall, 
Okay. You know, when it's, it's such a strange thing, uh, uh, Andrew. When racing is in your blood, when you're sick for the game, when you live for go. We, we say in South Africa, we're sick for the game. It doesn't mean we're sick. It, you know, you understand. We, we, we're just passionate for the game. We live, eat, breathe, like you, mm -hmm. horses and horse racing. And, you, you know, like if you and I went to Mauritius uh, and I looked at their form guide, you know racing, you, you adapt to it quickly, which is yes. what you say, you, you adapt you, to it quickly. You, you can, know? you can. You, you, you certainly can adapt yeah. quickly because I, I think the form studying and the form books that we've around the world are important, huge important tools. Yes. Um, exactly. And as you say, the most, more information that you can give, the better. Mm -hmm. um, which, which, which is... Which and is lucky these days, the, the, the video, the South African the racing we play video is more clear now. Before, it's, it's the resolution is not very yes, good, yes. but now it's more clear. I can keep watching to, to try to be a reference, you know. Yeah, well it's HD, so yeah, it's, it's come good. When you go to the tracks in the morning to, to, to look at the gallops and to interview trainers, etc., um, what time do you start? What time do you have to report for duty? Uh, actually, they don't restrict me or very rigid what time I should go, what time I should go. But I used to, and actually I, I didn't come that early too. I arrived at the track around 7, which is many people, they finish, too many jockeys are trying to finish their work, so they may have more free time to talk. But before that, I, actually, I, I used to wake up so early in the morning, so <laughs> I can do the form searching the internet and try to see if there's anything we can talk or, or get more information. I, I, actually, the jobs start even before I come to the, uh, coming to the race, race course. Okay, sure. Um, Dean is, is behind the scenes. We spoke about Hannah Lyle's wife, who was behind the cameras and enjoying the podcast live with us, as is Dean. And, uh, well, I'm sure we, we, we're all working on the day on Sunday, and it would be lovely to, uh, you know, get a, an assessment on a runner or a selection or we're all presenting so uh, it'll be lovely to maybe do some work with you on the day and, and um, we'll see you in the parade ring or if we can do anything to assist yeah, you def. for your production uh, only a pleasure if the time allows sure no problem a absolutely no yeah, problem. Yeah. have you got an early fancy for the big race the gold cup the world, world I Gold Cup? So, so far i study free race only so okay so you're still getting yeah. uh, getting busy but his favourite, you know, give me the princess, huh? Uh, yes, when the, in the one of the sprinting Looks races, like give me a princess. Yes, very yes. hard to beat. But of course, his draw make if some if accidents happen, you know. Oh, it's draw thirteen, right? Yes, 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 for sure. If accidents, um, give me the prince inside, right? Is better than Ishi Ishi Wangu Wangu. Uh, give me the prince. Yeah, f one or four. Yeah, he's drawing inside. Is he's draw outside. outside he, yeah, when yeah. they do the speed map, he may caught wide. But let's see. What, let's see if Ferry can overcome it. You know. What, you know, as journalists and as people of the public, like yourself, like Andrew, like myself, like everybody in South Africa, we often come under criticism, you know, and say that was a bad tip or that was nonsense or, you know, if he says, I think this can't win because it's drawn wide and it wins, they'll say, look at him, what does he know? How do you, how do you take criticism? Because we all get criticised, how do you handle it? Oh, just <laughs> there's something criticized the, the, our people, our so-called maybe called tipster in Hong Kong too. They may say, "Hey, if you can win all the time, you need you don't need to work anymore." Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. We wouldn't be able to work, and we'd be driving Ferraris. Yes, but we 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 make a judgment based on the information we have. You know, yes. Of course, it, something is, sometimes is right, sometimes is wrong. You know, it, it happens. You know, but but just. We, be yourself, you know. Do your best. Do your best. At least, yeah, At least you put some effort on. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah. Good point. Good point, Bart. You've at least we've put some effort in. And as you say, uh, as Sheldon Peters once said to me, uh, he said it on live television. You know, you're giving your opinion and you're giving your view and you're giving your all the information that you've heard with a good heart. You know, and and if it comes right, it comes right. If it doesn't come right, well, that's racing. You know, but it, it's been given with a good intention, and I think that's an important point. And also, point. I tell you, sometimes the punters knew it when, when you when you just didn't do enough homework to give, to give lousy tips. Yeah, so he's they guessing. knew it. They knew it. They knew. They knew it. Yeah, this guy didn't do enough homework. He just if you if you do go detail, even they lost, they may still admire you. Yes, you know? yes, absolutely. It, it, that's what's happening. And you got to understand too. I mean, uh, we all punters too. We all like a bet. We we, we journalists. We racing people. Are you a guesser? I'm not a guesser, no. I, 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 sometimes it's better to guess, I don't know. You know, sometimes uh, some people will say, hey, 
the tips is not good, and uh, I said, hey, if, if our tips are not good, I pay the price too. That means I lost money. Correct. <laughs> we are absolutely we're opening our money down. Yes. Absolutely. So don't blame me. You know. Yes, we all yeah. understand when we're yeah. losing. We all sad together. <laughs> oh absolutely. yes. But but because uh, um, you understand when you know with the punters, they're putting money down. It's it's an emotion. People are getting emotional, and and uh, as we do. I mean, I get emotional when the horses get beat and we're losing the money, etc. We're all human beings. But yeah, it's it's it certainly is. Yeah, you're quite right. Just stay true to yourself. Yeah. Do it with a good heart and it's an opinion. At the end of the day, everyone needs to... If I come to you and say, Bart, I like number six in the fifth race, you'll look at it and you, you might say, well, he could be right. Your decision is to go with it. You can say, he's mad. I don't like the horse. Mm. You don't go with it. It's your final decision. Yes. Don't, you know? don't, don't change back and forth. Don't do that. And, a absolutely. and of course, Panda likes, likes you to tip long shot, you know. Yes, it's but not I so always, easy. Uh, but I always say, hey, I can tip a 99 to one long shot too. But can, if he can win, it's another and thing. Another story, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But what do they say? There's another good old saying. That, there's a good old saying that I've learned. I'd, ra I'd rather back or tip a short-priced winner yes. than a long-priced loser. Yes. yes. And that's exactly as you say. Well... We, journalists, I mean, Andrew, as I said, is, is, is one of our leading journalists in, in, in KZN and in South Africa. He doesn't like the praise, but he'll get the praise. And it's lovely to be sitting next to you and, and meeting you for the first time and, and, and uh, look forward to racing with you at, at Hollywood Bet Scottsville tomorrow and, of course, at Hollywood Bet's Gravel on Sunday. And thanks for your passion and love for the industry and thanks for visiting our beautiful province. And oh, uh, we wish you all the best. Oh, my. Good luck to us. <laughs> <laughs> that is important. No, lovely. And, and, yes. and uh, thanks, Bart. And, and yes, I'm sure Dean will arrange if we can do some work again together to help you or whatever the case may be, or you to help us. We just look forward to having with you and working Lovely. with you and, and, and all the best to everyone in Hong Kong because I'm sure this will go to Hong Kong onto their production. And uh, <laughs> thank you for everything. And of course, to the Whirlpool Gold Cup race meeting. Uh, what a race meeting. We're going to go out of our way to make it extra special. But thank you and all the very for best. Sure. Lovely. Well, there we go, Andy. And uh, lovely, we've been treated to two top quality guests this morning. Eh? It's, a, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. It's there my we pleasure, go. too. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks bro. I'm in, in the box seat, you know. You're I, in I'm the box seat. Yeah, <laughs> I'm always watching uh, in Hong Kong, you know. <laughs> now I, I'm there. <laughs> no, no, fantastic. It's lovely to have you, Bart. Well, there yeah. we go. That's Bart. We started off with Lyle Hudson, ended off with Bart. You'll see more of him at the races. Uh, on Wednesday and of course on Sunday it's been a fabulous podcast, it's been a long one but my oh my, it's been one of our greatest we wish you all the very best, punt well stay safe and as always we'll see you in the number one box Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. We hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here. And uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy In the Box Seat Podcast from last week.